All right, so welcome to Cheater Stories, read by myself, Ebony White. This is a brand new channel and I'm so excited to start this channel. I started reading these on my other channel, you can check that out. But I had to create something separate for these stories because I'm just, I'm obsessed. And I feel like it deserved its own space. All these Cheater Stories will be on my podcast called Cheater Stories. My podcast home is Anchor. I do everything from Anchor, but you can also find me on other podcasts. So I'm gonna link those down below this video. Okay, so here are eight true stories of awful deployment breakups. Number one, the bank robber. So a friend of mine was on a second deployment as a married man. This one was long for the Marine Corps, 12 months versus the usual seven. And toward the end of his tour, he had a harder and harder time getting a hold of his wife. The last three weeks, they were out of touch altogether. She was a notoriously bad communicator, so he wasn't too suspicious about the whole thing. But when he returned, she wasn't there to meet him. That's a big red flag. If your spouse is not there to meet you and you be gone 12 months, there's something wrong. Something is seriously wrong. He drove to his home and the entire thing was empty, completely ransacked of all valuable items. After a long night sleeping on the floor, he went to the bank. He asked the teller for his account balance and stood there with his fingers crossed. The response was the worst thing you could possibly imagine. What account? What account means she completely closed the account. Like you might think, oh, well maybe she just swapped names. She Maybe she took his name off and put hers on, but no, she cleaned it out and closed it. That's tough. Wow. Number two, the deployment infidelity gone wrong. When I was deployed with the Air Force, there was an NCO and a senior NCO from different sections of the same organization who were notoriously cruel to us young airmen. They yelled, they name called, and they had their pet favorites. They didn't know each other much from their stateside assignments, but started getting pretty close over their shared frustration with clumsy airmen. So basically they didn't know each other before the deployment. They came from two different areas. At some point they started disappearing together. Then they would take the unit vehicle and disappear for hours at a time. Once they got back to the home station and went through medical, it turns out she got pregnant. They both lost a stripe and one got divorced karma for the underdogs wow so i guess one of them was uh, a female because at the beginning they didn't you know they didn't specify if they were male and female or what but they were both married that's crazy so you have people excuse my daughter she's throwing a fit in there anytime you get something out to eat she's she's got to have some of it she's only one and she don't have many teeth at all and half the time she can't even eat the stuff that we eat, you know. So uh, excuse her, she's in there throwing a fit cause she wants some Taco Bell and sounds like she's calmed down. Number three, the commitment folk. I'm working in Iraq for the State Department and about to come home for my second leave block. A week prior to returning, I find out that my girlfriend kissed someone else in between my last leave block and now. He doesn't say if she told him or how he found out about the kiss, but I asked her if she still wants me to come back or we just go our separate ways. She tearfully says she wants me to come back and we'll sort it out. On the way back, I'm delayed over, I'm delayed over a day in Kuwait City and end up arriving the morning before. So we're set to drive 16 hours from DC to Southern Florida. After a couple days of getting a bit of a lukewarm reception from her, I finally asked what's wrong. She proceeds to tell me that she can't do the long distance thing anymore and isn't sure she is ready to settle down. I think to myself, we drove 16 hours to Florida and not even four days into my vacation. And you think now is the best time to tell me this? To make things worse, we still have four days left and I'm not about to have a young woman drive all the way back up the Eastern seaboard by herself, so I have to grit it out. Even when we get back, I have no place to stay, so I crash at her place until I fly back to Iraq. In the process of staying with her, 
I come to find out that she had been seeing the guy she kissed for a couple months and to this day, they are still together. It took me about a year to get all my stuff back, although I have happily moved on. Good for him. I do wonder, however, if this is cosmic payback for breaking up with a girl three weeks before I was coming home on deployment leave after being gone for nine months. Wow, it could be karma. And I do like the fact that he did some self-reflection. When most people, if they do self-reflect, they keep it to themselves. <laughs> most people don't say out loud, hey. Most people don't say, hey, maybe I have something to do with this. You know, maybe this is payback or, you know, most people, a lot of people don't do much self-reflecting, especially when they've been hurt. When they've been hurt, like a lot of people like point their finger a lot. And I just thought it was cool that he, you know, he mentioned that. Number four, the very public breakup. I deployed with the guy whose breakup with his wife was like a slow motion car wreck, compounded by his total naivety and denial. First, she made friends with this Marine on base. Then she gave away her husband's dog. Then she withdrew $5,000 from their bank account. All the while, he refused to see what was happening. Only after his wife's new Marine friend was arrested for a sexual assault, did she call her husband and tell him. I don't know if he sexually assaulted her or somebody else. While he was on the phone with her in the middle of the shop with everyone there, all we heard was his end and it was devastating. Did you sleep with him? He asked. Do you love him? He got off the phone and tried to leave the building but collapses in the hallway just outside the doorway and screamed, she fucked him! With three exclamation marks. We literally had to drag him back in the office before the majors and colonels who worked in our building came out to investigate, which they inevitably did. It was maybe the most ridiculous and dramatic thing I've ever seen played out over three or four months in the deserts of Afghanistan. Really easy to predict, really hard to watch. Okay, so the first red flag was when she made friends with that Marine. And I'm assuming, yeah, that Marine was a guy, which is a total no-no. Like, as much as people want friends of the opposite sex, I just don't think it's a good idea. It's just not a good idea. Then she gave away her husband's dog. Oh, this is a red flag because she's giving away the dog because she wants to leave. Like, it's not her dog. It's not her responsibility. She don't want him. So she's trying to leave. She's making plans to go. You know, she's packing up things and... So the dog has to go. That was part of her exit strategy, getting rid of the dog. That was like a huge red flag. The friend, the dog, then she took $5,000 from the bank account and he knew about it. That's another huge red flag. That $5,000, she's gonna use that to start her new life with her, with her new boyfriend. His buddies that are looking on the outside, like they could see all of this, but this guy, he probably didn't see it because he sounds like someone who who's n not wearing his um his feelings like on his sleeve, you know, he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder. He he's obviously he's not a cynical person. Um he seems like a really good guy who's probably doesn't have much experience with relationships and probably hasn't heard many stories. Like I've heard lots of horror stories and I guess like you hear the stories and some people remain hopeful. I don't want to say we don't think it can happen to us, but we just remain hopeful that the person that we're with is going to be true, you know? Okay, the Dear John email. When I was a commander, I had a soldier who was having a rough time with his wife. He boarded a plane with us for Kuwait and as soon as he landed to begin his one year deployment, his wife sends him the Dear John email. He didn't even, he hadn't even got to Iraq yet. So that means he's traveling the rest of his travel to Iraq. That's gonna be on his mind. He can't do anything about it. He can't call her, he can't see her, you know. And then the whole year, that whole year, I mean, the good part about it is he'll be working 
he'll be busy and there'll be things to distract him from that. Really sorry to hear that. The you should be happy for me call. I spent almost an entire summer at sea on my ship completing pre-deployment workup training. After the third and final certification exercise, I called my boyfriend, that was her boyfriend, Tim, a Marine pilot. Delighted to be on dry land and hoping to meet up before I finally left for block leave and deployment. After reaching voicemail, Tim called me back while I was enjoying a margarita with one of my friends at a local Mexican restaurant. When I told him that yes, I was with company, he said, quote, oh good, you're with someone who can take care of you after I tell you this news. Like she's gonna be so broken and so hurt. Like, I mean, of course she will be, but this sounds really callous, you know? Okay, so listen. I met a girl a week ago and I think she's the one. He said, I think she's the one. Not I know. And besides, you're going to be gone a lot. I know this is probably pretty callous, but I hope you'll be happy for me. I'm just letting you know that it's possible to find the one. And when you know, you know, because I did. After a long pause and calling him out on the manner in which he's breaking, he was breaking up with me after a year, he replied, well, you know, I was never really going to come around to you. I'm so annoyed that you thought I would. By the nature of calling this a breakup, we failed at what this should have been. The hell. I'll always value you as a friend. As it turned out, Tim did me a favor. I met my partner almost exactly six months later. That whole little speech that he did sounds very narcissistic. And okay, so did you guys notice how he began with how he ended. So at the very beginning, he's like, oh good, you have someone with you to, to support you because I'm gonna strike this blow on you that's going to cripple you because I know I mean so much to you, you know? And then he ends with, um, we failed at what this should have been. Like, like this shouldn't even be a breakup. Like we never should have been together is what I take from that. What I get from that is we never should have been together. We failed. Like, we felt that what this should have been. This should have just been, I don't know, just friends with benefits. You know, like, we shouldn't have been together. So this shouldn't even be a breakup call. But I value I value you as a friend. So from the beginning of, of the speech to the end, is like totally don't even make any sense. Obviously, he knew that they had a thing and it was serious. And at the end, he was just like, he just tossed her away like, like an old plastic water bottle, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. But um, kind of good for her because one, it was only a year of her life. She's still young. She still has her career, career. she still has her health. She didn't have no kids with him. She didn't have no kids with him. And that is such a relief in itself. Number seven, the one who banged your brother. Some of my soldiers overheard one of my new privates shouting at his wife on the phone on a random afternoon in Afghanistan. Apparently she had gotten knocked up by some other guy for the second time. Also, it was his brother for the second time. But he was determined to make it work and didn't divorce her, even after she tried to leave him for another woman. When he got back home, she had spent all his money, though, and I almost fell out of my chair when he came in the office one morning and blurted out, Hey, sir, it burns when I pee. Dang. Okay, number eight, the silver lining. War brings out the best and worst in people, as many can attest. Surprisingly, there is tremendous love at the same time with the pain and loss of war. I sadly saw many soldiers have their heart broken as their loved ones at home robbed them blind and ran off with another man or woman. One of my sergeant's wife became pregnant with another man's baby directly before my first deployment 
he had had a vasectomy a year prior to that. So there's no way it could have been his. I saw a soldier go home on leave only to find his house empty and wife, dogs, and stuff gone. <sighs> Don't get me wrong. I also heard the stories of deployed soldiers who had illicit affairs up and down the ranks overseas and sometime took them home. Oh my gosh, that's awful. A lot of military members cheat on their spouses when they're overseas, when they're deployed. Even when they're stateside, they cheat. So it, like, it goes both ways, it's, it's nasty. <clears throat> In all of the loss, I saw a story of remarkable love. A fellow officer who I previously worked with was deployed in a separate area and suffered horrific wounds in an IED blast, leaving him disfigured. Out of that incident, he met his future wife during rehabilitation, and they have several beautiful children. Every time I see a soldier relationship disaster, I'm reminded of the burned man who found love that healed his war wounds. So that ended with a sweet note. <laughs> wow, that was a lot. I'm glad that it ended on a bittersweet note. That was a really sweet story at the end, but all the other ones, even that one was a doozy because he was left deformed from the war. Gosh, all of those were really horrible. They were really awful. So to all my subscribers or anyone who's watching this, please feel free to comment and let me know what you think about these stories. Also, if you have any stories that you'd like to submit to me, like if you want your story read on my channel, please send it to my email. If you want me to say your name, then I'll say it, or your initials or whatever, then I'll say it. If you leave it blank, then I'll just, you know, leave it anonymous, obviously. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.